Hello and welcome to day 26 of this Unity Game Development Journal. So, still week 4 here, working on all the map related things, trying to get a brand new system in place for generating the worlds or the scenes or whatever you want to call them. So, let's show you what I did today. It is um, Wednesday, so I'm giving myself till uh, Friday will be approximately one week at this. Um, so I think I can get it done. So, um, I have now my base tile layer, which, um, was what we worked with the other day. So this is a full 50 by 50 tile, uh, using this, you know, random tile set here. This is nowhere near the final. I've, I'm finding a, uh, a bunch of errors with this tile set that I'm not going to be able to use in the final product. So, uh, this is just for testing purposes but I can put 50 by 50 tile map on here. Excellent. I have all these things that as of yesterday, I could just walk all over. So um, I did illustrate uh, adding characters. So I still have that functionality, but I'm doing it a little bit different in the code. Um, this is still not done. So this is probably gonna be tomorrow where I finish off the object side of things. But today I added this brand new layer called collisions. And all this is, is I, uh, can put pretty much any tile I want. This is, doesn't matter on this layer what tile it is, so I just happen to pick this tile. And anything I paint on this layer will be cast as a collision, as a collider in um, in the game. And I'm not talking a 2D collider, like an actual game object. All I'm doing is I'm flagging it as a collision, this uh, coordinate in the world. So it's really, really unique because then the game doesn't have to actually manage any object for it. It just is flagged as a collider. And every time I want to move into a space, I just check, is this space a collider? Is it flagged as a collider? If it is, I can't move there. If it isn't, I can move there. Now, one thing you'll find with this and this tile set is in order to accomplish that, I'm flagging the entire square. Now, um, the problem is, see on, on the side cliff, it's only taking up half a square, so my character will be stopped well before the actual visual of the cliff, which could be an issue. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on how the tiles are designed, and if they're designed properly, they'll just work like this. Or I can sort of tweak the collider to be a little bit different, depending on what the final product's going to be. But uh, essentially, all you do is just create a, a, a layer called collisions, or whatever you want to call it, and you paint any tile you want on here. It doesn't matter what it is, because it's not going to show up visually. It's just going to be in the data, in the CSV, as a collider tile. So that's that. So I have the base tiles, the collider uh, layer, and then the layer representing the game objects. Now I'm spawning actual NPCs at this time, but that uh, characters layer will actually be called objects. And... Um, that's just going to be any object I want in there. It's going to pull from a database saying tile something so and so ID refers to this object, and then I'll just spawn that object in that in that uh, coordinate spot. So that's the tile map so far. So it's really really easy, basic, not much complicated stuff going on there. In the files, the main thing I worked on and changed is this um, tile parser. So now I'm taking in uh, let's see here, three files. So I got the map file, the collision file, and the object file. And it's a little bit more work here up front, but it um, it's not too bad. What I do is I read in all three files, and I assign those lines to these lists. Map lines, collision lines, and object lines. Then I go through, and I tried to think of a better way of doing this, but... You know, what everything I was doing was just getting, was just getting complicated, so I thought for initially loading, I'll just run through... Um, I'll loop through each of these lists for every single tile spot three times. One for the map, and then I assign the tile IDs for the map. The next one is for the collision, so anytime there's a collider, I just assign that to a dictionary. Same with the objects, I assign that to a dictionary. So the maps um, is going to be done through um, this int array, this, uh, uh, this fixed size array, and then the collisions and the objects are actually going to be a dictionary. And that way, with the dictionaries, I like it because I'm not going to be doing the entire map. It's going to be collider. It's just a few different coordinates. And I can go through and check, you know, is this collider, um, is that coordinate a collider? And I can check based on a coordinate of vector 2. 
So I thought that was a really cool way of doing that, so I'm doing it that way. So that's pretty much it. This just goes through and it just checks all three of those files and assigns all the IDs to the specific, whether it's an array or a dictionary, it just throws it into there. And then it spits it back out to my world controller where here uh, I get the parser information here, the map parse data, and then I can generate a world based on that map parse data. And this is sort of like what we did before. Um, so I'm going through one loop here through all the tiles, does this, it uh, creates the tile game objects. Well, first it creates the tile data through a tile model, and then it creates the uh, tile uh, game object, which we did the last few days. This is no, not changed at all. We register the callback for the, for the visual of the tile. We set, we set the sprite ID, and this is something new here. I say, if this coordinate is part of the collision tiles, set is collision true to that tile, tile data, All right? And that's it, that's colliders right there. So it just goes through and as it's creating each tile, just checks, hey, is this in the collision tiles uh, dictionary? If it is, set is collision flag on that tile, done. Um, and then I was generating the game objects here, but I ran into an issue where the callbacks weren't lining up with when things were instantiated. So I took it out of here and it's pushed back into the world controller on uh, all this is happening in awake. So I just waited to the start is called, and then I initialized characters. And tomorrow this will end up turning into initialize objects. Um, so then you just come down here, initialize characters, which will eventually just be all the objects. And I run through, now this is a little sloppy again, but I run through um, the dictionary, which will only be as large as the number of objects that are spawning there. So if there's only two objects, this only runs through twice, right? Because that dictionary will only be a length of two. So it is proportional to the number of objects that I need to spawn. Um, so then I have the, I get the key here, which is a vector two coordinate. And then I just say, get the tile at that coordinate and create a NPC in this case using that tile. And this is all just the test code that I've been working with um, for a while now. What's gonna happen eventually, hopefully tomorrow, is I'll have a database that says um, whatever the value is, this integer value in this dictionary, whatever that ID integer is, fetch the appropriate um, object to spawn based on that ID. And then that's where I'm just going to spawn the object here based on whatever ID I need. Okay, and that's it, that's everything. So it's pretty much the same as before, but I added this extra collision layer and changed how some of the things are, are uh, working in the back end. So we'll just run this. And you'll see how, how it is a little sloppy, the collisions. So, um, so obviously it's gonna need a bit of tweaking, especially when we go and design the tile set. But we have the characters spawning there, just like they were before. I have this cliff, and if I go up, I can't go up anymore. If I go down, I can go up and uh, side to side, same with here. So the, cl the collisions are automatically there, right? Now it's not, I wonder if I can illustrate this again. It's not actually creating any, um, any game objects there. The gizmos are on, yeah, so we should be able to see things. Uh, let's see here, the world controller. So here's all these, um, here's all these tiles here. So there's no colliders being created at all through any of these. Yeah, anyways, I'm not gonna go through them all. Hopefully you just believe me, there's no there's no game object colliders at all in this thing. So it's very uh, lightweight collision system. Now the objects that I will be spawning will be prefabs with their own, um, with their own 2D colliders in them, but there's not gonna be that many game objects, right? There's only gonna be the characters and a few things like pushable objects, liftable objects, interactables, and things like that. So I think it's gonna be fairly lightweight to do a massive uh, world. Uh, and yeah, you might see some flickering here with the tile map. That's just because the tiles I'm actually using are pretty crappy. And the background I just sort of threw in there for that grass, it's not really lining up properly. That's why you see some flickering at the grass level. Um, just because the sprite sheet was not created properly. But uh, yeah, essentially this is all working great. The batches are, are kept to two, unless I have some other game objects in here. Now we're up to three, and I think we'll have, uh, nope, because the, the two Bs are the same, so there's only three batches. Uh, FPS is staying steadily around 50 to 60 range, uh, but I am recording, so that's why it's a little lower than 60. Um, yeah, and I'm happy with the CPU stuff, so this is all working out quite well, and I have uh, basic collision, uh, 
the tiles are all working, game object spawning is all working. I just need to get a, a better system for the game objects so I can spawn different types of objects. But essentially it's all coming together. So tomorrow, Thursday, I'm going to get the game object stuff working. Friday, I'll be able to work on cleaning up, up some stuff. And then we'll be able to assess how the whole thing went at the end. All right. So uh, thank you very much for watching, and if you want to subscribe, uh, I'd really appreciate it. Leave comments below if you have any questions or uh, comments, I guess, and uh, like the video if you learned anything or found it interesting. Thank you very much. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.